So we have a new guest joining us in the studio. Her name is Liz Lenger. She is the chair of the Copyright Tribunal. Today is Thursday. It's a Justice Thursday conversation. Good morning, Liz. Good morning. How are you? Oh, sorry. Your mic was off. Oh. Say again. Good morning, Liz. Good morning. How are you? <laughs> Very well. Thank you. <laughs> Karim Busana, welcome to Kenya's Biggest Conversation. Asante. That's the hot seat of the Situation Room. Yes, it feels very hot. Does it? <laughs> I, uh, it was Dennis who was there before. Uh, you know, he, he's, he's, he's a pastor, he's a reverend. He yeah. walks with the warmth. Indeed. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Siti Muga uh, always gives us a, a daily proverb. And he selects a country. He gives us the proverbs from that country for an entire week. Monday, Tuesday, yesterday and today. And hopefully tomorrow. You never know with Siti. The proverbs are from Uganda. City. Yes, today's proverb. Mm. One who was not there kills the buffalo. <laughs> One who was not there kills the what, what does that mean? Another great thing. Liz, yeah. what do you understand? Wow. I, I guess I understand it as the person who, who was not in the presence of whatever challenge would have a, a better killing it mindset because they, are, they have a can-do <laughs> attitude. That's my assumption mm -hmm. <laughs> from what it sounds like. So it means that they come with a fresh perspective and they're able to bring something to the table and get the work done. Mm -hmm. That's what I think. Mm. Am I right? <laughs> no. So this person was not there in the planning of yeah. this particular hunt. And then they come in and these other guys have just been running with this buffalo left, right and center. Yeah. They've been obsessing over it. And this uh -huh. one was like, we kill it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just kill the thing. Yeah, it's a very good perspective. It's an interesting one. Yes. That's a very interesting one. It's a very good. The thing about Proverbs is there is no right and wrong, really. Yeah. Yes. It's you listen to it and it's where it touches you mm. and where it bears meaning. In fact, that was the purpose of Proverbs, for someone to draw meaning from it, mm. something that reflects on their own circumstances and situation. Mm. So you are quite right. Excellent. Good yes. for me. Yeah. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Liz, the Copyright Tribunal, introduce us to it. Okay. Um, so the Copyright Tribunal is uh, basically a specialized court that listens to copyright disputes. And, um, you know, it's very hard to talk about Copyright Tribunal if you don't talk about copyright. Yeah? Because... I feel like for the longest time, intellectual property, because copyright falls on intellectual property law, right? So for the longest time, this intellectual property law has been feeling like an elitist monster, for mm. lack of a better term, right? Because guys are like, oh, IP is just for people who have money, for the big corporates, mm. yeah? But do you ask yourself, how do these big corporates become big, right? It started from the creations of the mind, right? It means I sat down and I thought about a program, for example, like what we have here. This is someone's intellectual property subsequently owned by the company right mm -hmm. but it started with someone yeah so someone sat down and said i want to create something so they sit down they envision it and then they uh, manifest it in a way so like with copyright we call it fixation so you from the head from that script you have in your mind then you write it down right the minute you write it down it becomes a property it's an intangible property and mm -hmm. it's protectable mm -hmm. the thing with africans is we've always been oh shamba <laughs> piece of land is all that, we that know that is property yeah tangible. that is property so when you some people you tell them intangible property eh what is that what are you talking about no go to school and become a doctor <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you want to be a musician no 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 you want to be a filmmaker you know that has always been the challenge and um for me i come from a creative background and you know having been in that space and, and in uni i had the privilege of being in a music studio and then I saw this hard work people were putting in. I was part of a girl group that didn't, you know, we didn't make it <laughs> because of certain challenges, infrastructural cha challenges, mm. IP being one of them. But you can imagine people are in a studio, they've made a queue, and there is someone behind this beautiful gadget waiting to listen to artists one by one, and they sing, and they do corrections, and they do their whatever. They're like, you know, all that fancy stuff. Like, that is work. Mm. So when I would sit and I see that, and I'm like, oh my goodness, we only see the beautiful stuff on TV or listen it on radio, but we never ask ourselves what kind of investment goes into, goes into it. Mm. And slowly I would start having conversations with artists. And that's how I understood IP became this, it was this thing that they didn't think made sense to them. It was so unreachable, so um, expensive, 
yeah and i think it's really time we have more conversations about intellectual property about copyright because once we understand first what it is we are creating then now we know how to protect it which includes now dispute resolution how do you fight better or how do you defend your rights mm. better right mm. but you have to first understand what are these rights there are a myriad of examples when you know having talking about this because i mean i even just the other day reading through some some things and then there was yet another person who was complaining oh you know i took this idea to my supervisor and i said this is something that we can actually do and they said okay well, maybe we'll get back to you a year later you find that the organization has then used the idea that you brought to them and they're making money out of it and you're left on the cold hard floor are we drawing linkages then between what it should be? So if I have an idea and I bring it to you and it looks like it's something that will be viable, how do I go about protecting it even if I'm going to give the usage of it to somebody else? How do we start yeah. this whole process? What should it look like? Okay. So once it's in the mind, remember I said you have to fixate it or figure out how to bring it to life, mm. right? Because once you bring it to life, then you're able to seek assistance on how do you need to protect it. And that assistance would either mean either you have invested in uh, yourself, in, did a small course on introduction to intellectual property, at least you know where you're starting from, mm. or you find a competent lawyer who will then explain to you and give you the ABC of how to protect yourself. Because again, also with IP, it's about once you tell me what this is you have created or you're creating, I'm able to tell you, is it a copyright? Is it a patent? And you know, the patent, patent is the word that's most commonly misused, right? Because I think it's just a common term. Mm. And, and I think it's time to demystify those terms, right? And um, for the demystification is not for people to just uh, to cram, but to just know. But if you just say, I protect my IP, that's fine. I protect the, the expression of my ideas, it's fine, right? L leave the technicalities to us. Mm. However, a patent is the highest form of protection when it comes to intellectual property law. It means you are the first person in the whole world. They have nev nobody has ever heard of it. So you see that threshold is really high, right? Mm. It's new, it's novel. And then for us, we look at industrial applicability, which means it has that scientific, manufacturing, technical aspect to it. Is it that nobody else has ever heard of it and nobody else has ever done it or you were the first to note it down so when you, it becomes a pattern? So you are, first of all, you're the first one to have ever done it, mm -hmm. right? You, you're the first one to have ever thought about it, yeah? So the thing is, when we're looking about that newness and, and novelty, it means it's nowhere. Okay. Like if I even check on the internet, I can't see it. Okay. That's the thing. That is not being the first mm. to have thought about it. Yeah, so thought it's about a, it, but expressed to expressed it, put it, it together. Yeah, yeah. Okay. exactly. Mm. But still, you know, at, at the time when, when you're innovating, even yourself, you're like always like, I'm the first one. Yeah, everybody <laughs> thinks that they're the first. Yeah, exactly. So you have to make sure then, t true to fact, that it is not. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so that's how you then get a patent. And it's an exclusive right for 20 years. So no one can touch it without your permission for 20 years. Mm. And, you know, we're talking about manufacturing, science, tech. It's huge, right? So even the, the, the returns are always much bigger, mm -hmm. right? Because you're revolutionizing an industry. Yeah. Um, so it's usually a very commonly misused word. Mm. Um, so you'll have people say, oh, I want to patent idea. No, I want to protect the expression of my idea. So how are you expressing your idea? Then how do we protect it? Mm. Mm. So you find that most of the time, like especially people in the arts, we're not patenting ideas. But that's not to mean that there are no patentable innovations in the creative industry, uh -huh. right? I mean, like even, for example, a mobile, mm. it's seen as tech, but it has revolutionized the entertainment industry, mm. for example. Yeah. So there are... There are there are possibilities of that. But you'll find that most of the time now when it comes to this expression of ideas, we're talking about literary works, artistic works, audiovisual works, sound recordings, like what we will listen to after this program has been you know, recorded and shared elsewhere. Yeah. We're talking about broadcast. We're talking about photography. We're talking about sculptures, software. We protect software by copyright because mm. of the nature of the source code. It's like literary works, right? Um, we're talking about, um, you know, the musical compositions. Um, we're talking about architecture. Yeah, architecture, architectural people. Drawings. Drawings. They don't imagine that they have copyright, but they do. Yeah. Um, so you see the artistic entertainment sort of space. That's where it falls. Even people in the education sector. I create um, um, a curriculum. That's my copyright. Mm. And then, you know, it will vest in the individual who creates it. And then you'll find that in some instances, either A, you are under employment, so you'll have an employment act. Mm. And in the employment act, the default position is if you create something, it becomes your 
employers because yep. you're being paid. Yep. So if you know about this, then you are able to negotiate and say, hey, I'm Eric. I come with this kind of experience. I want to negotiate. If I bring, if I create any new assets, I want to be a co-owner. While, yeah? while in the employment. Yes, you can. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's something you've created. You're bringing them something new, right? Something that will change their business. Something they that will make them money. They hired me to do money. exactly that. <laughs> yeah, so Should this be at that point of negotiating the initial yes, contract? Exactly. So what you're saying, um, this, is, this is your job description. And this is what you're entitled to in terms of uh, compensation. But then you also add a clause and say, any innovation that I come up with that we can protect, I will share in ownership of it. Yeah, like it's a, it's a negotiation. Which means that if you haven't included that clause in your contract, then exactly. you own nothing. Then you own nothing. That, that because the default position of the law is that when you're employed, it belongs to the employer. To the employer. Same thing with now a work for hire. I don't know how to develop software, right? Then I yeah. go to a software developer and I say, hey, I want to create something in legal tech. I have to have a conversation and tell them expressly because the law says that a right has to be transferred to me in writing. They have mm. to transfer to me their copyright in writing. So even though I have paid, there has to be somewhere in writing that I have transferred. If it's not there, then the default position of the law, it still belongs to the author, right? So again, you see there, right. there are those dynamics that will change. And then where I create as myself and I commercialize as myself, I have all the rights. And then I can decide who I want to work with. And then there'll be contracts. And mm. the different contracts will vary with the industry, you know, like for musicians. Please repeat that for City because I can see he's looking at it. He's thinking, I have approached a techie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I have an idea. And I want this idea to actually come in the form of an app, all right, yeah. that offers this kind of service. And then I'll go to market with this app. Yeah. Unless the contract stipulates that the code belongs to CT. CT can go to market with the app and then the writer of the code will come and say, but this is, you're basically using my creation. Yeah. Hey, CT <laughs> Meskia. Yeah, so contract. But you're not But every time I, I listen to discussions around intellectual property rights, mm-hmm. my mind immediately goes to the music industry. Yeah. And when you talk about protection, what I hear is that it is these protections that these laws provide that enables a musician to actually just forget getting rich, make a living from whatever it is that they have brought into being. Exactly. But in a country like ours, I don't see it. So the question that is in my mind, oh no, the additional question that is in my mind is I'm asking, how forget the enforcement, <laughs> because enforcement in the absence of understanding is tricky. Yeah. Uh, how do we get people to learn, understand, and appreciate copyrights? Because to be a musician in this country or to be an artist, it's it's like a commitment to poverty. Yeah. You are more likely to have a name. People will know who you are. They will cherish what you do. They will enjoy it. But you will not be the direct beneficiary of whatever it is you have created that other people have True. enjoyed. So I think there's an issue of culture change, right? Because when you look at historically how we have been approaching the arts, especially, mm. it was always your parents would say, oh, no, no, that's just a pastime. You're going to sing. It's just a pastime. <laughs> you're just entertaining people. Yeah, you're drawing. So people will As see you your grow drawings. Up. You know, yeah. So already that culture, it, it became so inculcated in us that even for us now, you would see that people will be like, if someone raises an issue on, on Twitter, especially, mm. okay, your tea, <laughs> you know, then people are like, why are they being petty? And people are trying to assert their rights. So you can see already there's a cultural issue. And I'll take it back to when uh, Saudi Soul had that issue and they put it online. Yep. The comments from Kenyans was something. Like, I would see people say, oh, they're being petty. Oh, see, it's a song that we can use. Yeah. What is their problem? And they're getting and exposure. Like, yeah, they're getting exposure. <laughs> <laughs> so already that cultural issue, especially from the consumer perspective. And then from the artist's pr- perspective and the creative's perspective, it's a urafiki kind of thing. I want to be a celeb, you know, I want to be known. So they forget about the business. And then there are people who now understand the business and they'll say, hey, city, city, I do it, let, let, let me go and, you know, masquerade up Ivo, sign contracts on his behalf, making chums. You go for a gig, you're told, hey, CT, eh? Manzee, these guys have said, 
unapata 220k <laughs> and a guy has cool at like 150 <laughs> yeah, that's guys when you're signing contracts on your behalf and you've never investigated yeah. a guy goes for meetings you're not asking him boss ule ambonini kwa meeting what am i expecting show me the contract mm. yeah mm. nothing so people don't have that they have not been having that business mindset we have those who are there and i think uh, the challenge is to to the media to also now start telling these stories more mm. let's not just talk about the fluff of music and entertainment let's also talk about the entertainment side right mm. let's talk i mean the business side let's talk about the legal side because all this stuff will start from the legal the legal builds up the business and then also now you become a success and now your fluff is worth something mm. you know it's interesting because um a world that i inhabit uh, periodically the world of research the language of intellectual property rights is common it's something that people understand what to, to a certain degree but if you look at what no, let me specifically medical research part of the reason why there is strength in that particular arena is because of whatever else is associated with it because you're talking about the pharmaceutical industry you're talking about the practice of medicine you're talking about those who consume all these things the impact of it and so the value addition is not considered to be at the same level as entertainment and yet entertainment is actually very crucial to our well-being exactly in terms of importance i would say entertainment is even more important mm. it's therapy yes <laughs> it is serious therapy You see, my concern here is how then do we shift this? Uh, I mean, the culture and tradition notwithstanding, how do we get people to understand the value? Because the value is actually before us and the place it has in society is before us. Yeah. I say this because you only lo- need to look at the developed world and look at what entertainment entertainers earn, what people who are in sports, which is essentially also entertainment, earn, and the value they are given yeah and then what is associated with it what they wear what they use etc etc so there is an understanding of it elsewhere here problem <laughs> <laughs> i think in our minds we have really overcomplicated it mm-hmm. yeah because um msani ataki kuchoka yeah if you tell msani eh uh, here's a contract you just look and see if what what do you understand cuz cuz at the end of the day it's still fundamental right as i might be your lawyer but i need you to understand yeah so that if tomorrow i'm not there how do you help yourself how don't be so helpless so it's about that uh, ability to just say you know what i'm i'm ready to learn and i'm ready to become a, to embrace the business side i i don't need to be that lawyer or that accountant but to just know enough to know enough when you're being cheated to know enough when the deal is good mm. or to know when you know when it makes sense mm. and it will take you to the next level like you just need just that enough knowledge mm. and then leave it to the professionals and then interrogate interrogate those contracts you know a friend says you no no you just come kucha to record and then um and taku show taku show because that's what normally happens <laughs> then kidogo it's on an advert and you're like yo my friend <laughs> that's my song you guys that's my job then your friends are like eh so how much did you get paid At, oh i'm supposed to get paid <laughs> you're just happy that you've got to, yeah, you know yeah exactly so it's, it's that mindset is really really important mm. you know for example with musicians if we the four of us say today we're going to write a song mm. right mm. we have what we call a split sheet and we we say ct comes up with a with a beat oko here is is creating some lyrics yeah then we are like okay she writes like the the full verse mm-hmm. or 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 the full chorus and mm. we you and I do a verse but then she's done a lot of it right yeah. then we're able to sit down and say you know what uh, i think mine is 20% because i've not done much so we prorate the contribution yeah because you see after after we've done that and we we and kiana that time right when we still don't see the potential of the song and that time we are objective because we are fair <laughs> yeah. we are fair to each other <laughs> yes so when we have that split sheet now because this music song now this musical works will be used in an advertisement in a movie mm. and they, for them to even use it in the beginning they will say where is your split sheet because we want to know ownership we want to know 
just like when you sell a shamba if it's lease on the certificate then we know we're dealing with lease right yeah. so the same thing they will want to see that split sheet and then they'll say okay fine we want to use this song and we can see here so we want to offer owners. you x amount of money and then we already know if 100k comes the split sheet will take into effect 2020 60 whatever we make our money right. we're happy people yeah so but we don't have those things so you find that now even in terms of value when say for example a foreigner wants to use the song they are afraid of those complications because now they don't know uh, where is your split oh uh, what's that you need mm. <laughs> this song near to yeah this song near to wait 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 what you pesa or depending on who they are talking to if it's who they are talking to i wrote the verses anyway so it's my song yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> forget our contribution mm. you yes. know, i just came up with a hook and ooh, ooh, which is very very which is actually the <laughs> it's the meat of the <laughs> song the meat of the song <laughs> all those are things that you wrote oh, that was a pleasure people <laughs> only remember <laughs> <laughs> mm, exactly and you see they already now see that that dilemma mm. they'll be like okay now they don't want that drama that comes with now the post production and now someone is you know even on social media they mm. start start yelling and say oh so and so are thieves they are stolen but at the end of the day nisisi you didn't do the didn't work do the work so Liz, it, it means that a lot of awareness is needed prior yes so even by the time now we are coming to the tribe you know mm. <laughs> It, the only people who would come to the tribunal sh- would be people who know yes of this whole process and then they know about the existence of your tribunal exactly let's talk about that after the break huh? so that you tell us then how what kind of issues do you deal with at your tribunal mm-hmm. uh, how do you adjudicate them how do you resolve matters and in cases where you know you can clearly see here there's lack of understanding what do you do to help the case going forward. Okay. <coughs> This is the Situation Room, the only way to start your day. The conversation continues with Liz Lenger. She's the chair of the Copyright Tribunal. Liz, you've explained very well. You've explained to us what copyright is all about and all those aspects of intellectual property. Now let's come to the tribunal. Okay. What do you deal with at the tribunal? Okay. So our mandate at the moment is a little narrow but we specifically deal with um um disputes arising from decisions from the Kenya Copyright Board who administers copyright um on behalf of uh, the government um so they give licenses for example to what we call collective management organizations CMOs so mm-hmm. Kenya Association of Music Producers uh Music Copyright Society of Kenya MCSK PRISC Performance Rights Society of Kenya they administer those rights we also have um what we call copyken they administer reprographic rights so basically books the the right to photocopy so but copyken has really been having a challenge for mm. a while there they've not been licensed so because they they've not organized themselves so but those are the rights yeah so when they're getting a license from kekobo and they feel like either the they have been refused a license and it was unfair then they would bring that dispute to us where they feel like there have been certain unreasonable demands from kekobo they will come to us and then subsequently this year most license the music to the users mm. for example the stations the tv stations uh owners of entertainment establishments yeah but tattoos um, salons but tattoos all that money. so if any of them mm. feels like uh, a camp preschool mcsk did not re- refuse to give them a license and they feel it was unfair they will come to us if they feel like also again some unreasonable demands are being made for them to get a license then they'll also come to us yeah mm. and then we also have um, disputes of our registration of copyright Now registration of copyright is not a must because copyright is automatic. The minute you fixated it, you've moved it from your head and you've transposed it. As long as you've written it yeah. down, it's automatic. It's automatic. Okay. However, we have seen that now registration becomes really important because of asserting this right and pointing to you as the author. However, that certificate is not the full and final mm. because there will be instances where someone will register it unfairly, right? Or yeah. in a sly fashion. So if that is an issue then you come to us and say we are challenging this registration of copyright I'm actually a co-author or um I have some rights in it and I have been removed I am not in this in this certificate I'm not being recognized as you know as the example you gave earlier right I've not been included mm. so if you, if you want to challenge that registration then you also bring it to us then we have also the mandate to grant what we call fair remuneration um where a musical works is used in a broadcast I feel like that could have been more of course because copyright is about 
protecting <coughs> all those rights I mentioned, or rather those industries I mentioned that are protected by copyright. Mm. So no, it's not just music, it will be artistic works, it will be whatever, right? Mm. So it's an issue of that infringement, or that you use without permission, and then you come to us. So and uh, for now, it's just musical works. So for musical works used in a broadcast or in an advert, they can come to us in their act. Mm. And then we would determine based on uh, industry standards how they should get compensated but we hope that in future that mandate can be broadened mm-hmm. because the ethos of copyright law is if it is not yours then you have to find the author and clear the rights okay. get the permission and pay for it and if you don't then we would as a tribunal so the responsibility is on the user yes to find the owner exactly okay yes but clear even, something mm-hmm. clear something here for me mm-hmm. you talked about so number one a broadcasting station such as ours we would be paying you know for use of all the music that we play here so we'll pay all the three cmos or one cmo or whatever right Mm -hmm. so we go to mcsk we go to prisk we go to camp and we are paying royalties for the stuff that we've played on air now this other one of the fair remuneration where does it come up okay i hear you saying that if i've used it is it that if i've used it for commercial purposes or is it if i've just picked your song and and use it for a promo for instance so with like broadcasting it's a bit different Mm -hmm. yeah because your immediate person first of all you deal with the cmo right yes um and it will depend with the representation that the cmo has given you right um so like one of the things i can tell you in terms of um the, the traditional work of a cmo is supposed to uh, administer and collect royalties on behalf of artists where they cannot or it's not practical so for example now here we play nonini we play who we play who it wouldn't make sense for nonini to come and say hey you guys you played my song today give me five thousand bob then nameless comes and says oh even me you played my song give me ten thousand bob right mm. so that's why cmos exist mm. and then we've seen like for example with mcsk they changed their model and um I think it's one of the things that the artists have not understood. Because what happens is when you join MCSK, you have two documents that you sign as an artist. Mm -hmm. The mechanical rights agreement and the deed of assignment. Mm. And then what they have done is that all these other rights that accrue directly to the author, aside from now the public use of the music, you you see ideally, because this is is my shamba, right? Mm. I should be done to say it can be used on an ad for Emirates, it can be used on an ad for so-and-so, it should be me. I should be the one to decide whether I will have the music on Spotify, yeah. I can have it on, I don't know which other platform. <laughs> 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 mm. So, but what MCSK did, they have such a document where members sign. And unfortunately, some of them are not reading it. So if you're clearing from MCSK, you have already, unfortunately, or fortunately, <laughs> depending on what shoe you're wearing, cleared the rights. But in the traditional sense, a CMO is only supposed to administer as far as public performance is concerned. That's it. Then everything else is oh. left to me to okay. decide. Okay. Now, would your representation, so would you then say it, it makes sense for you to have representation legally to then be able to explain some of these things to you? Because if you're looking at it from, a, you know, a layman's point of view, if you have a piece of pro- look, man, you, what you're looking for is um, some kind of profit, maybe, yeah. commercial value. I want money to start coming. I mean, yeah, I came out of the I'm, studio, I want yeah. this song. It plays so on radio, played, how, kiss tune. When is it ching ching? When is it happening, right? Mm. Yeah. All these other things that you talk about, which could essentially get you in some kind of trouble or, uh, or some kind of loss later or oh, that could mean more money right or yeah. could mean more money mm. right it's not expl- you don't it's not it doesn't seem to be bareback right there for you to see it maybe have to do a little bit of digging to find it yes so that it almost seems as though the process demands that you have representation by somebody who understands where these things are lying exactly mm. and 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 that's why i said i think we really need to embrace the business side mm. you know just because i give you a, a document and i say just sign here i'll give you some money or i'm, I'm here <coughs> to protect you mm. you shouldn't just take it on the face of it interrogate mm. and ask so how are you helping me i see a document here that has very big words jargon and it is legal, especially when we're talking about IP and contracts on copyright. Hey, we use some big words. Mm-hmm. So don't sign something you don't even understand. Don't sign something where you need to sit with a Cambridge or an Oxford dictionary and say, even this yeah. one, I'm like, <laughs> this word. <laughs> then I join you it know? with the rest. Eh? Yeah, then you join it with the rest. <laughs> like get someone to, to, to talk to you about it mm-hmm. and you understand and say, okay, what does this mean? Mm-hmm. Do I really need to be in this engagement or relationship okay. to make sense? 
So do you find then that folks who then come to the tribunal disputing a particular matter, do you find that sometimes the one who comes as the who are they now? The defendant. Yes. <laughs> they <laughs> the respondent. They'll come as a respondent or mm. complainant or applicant. Maybe in this case it would be the defendant. Mm -hmm. That they are not understanding this jargon and that's why they've gotten themselves in a yes. bit of a pickle. Do yeah. you find that they are in the majority? Yeah, yeah, they are majority. And mm. the good thing with a tribunal, we are not like a traditional court of law, mm. right? We are here to guide. We're supposed to make dispute resolution uh, accessible, mm. expedient, friendly. Mm. Yeah, mm -hmm. and at the same time, also, we are supposed to help you protect these relationships because, yes, Makosa Mefanyika Leo, but tomorrow you will need each other, Indeed. right? So, as we're not here to say, Oh, you did this, ha, ha, you know, <laughs> <laughs> no, but we will say, unfortunately, here the law says X, Y, and Z, uh, especially if you've this because you see, when you come to the dis the, dis the tribunal, first of all, we'll be like, You guys can't settle this without us, surely, mm -hmm. you can't. Seriously, like really, like we we try and steer you that we direction. We even encourage you to yeah, go and yeah, even pushing yeah, you, yeah, so that when you discuss and agree, you you bring that agreement, settlement agreement, and then us will stamp it and it's registered at the high court mm. and it's a solid document, right? So we'll push you towards that. Then now, if you if you can't, then we'll bring you back and say, okay, now you have you you are saying X, Y, and Z. Where are your documents? Mm. You are saying X, Y, and Z. Where are your documents? Yeah, and then we'll review and say now under the law. Because you failed to do X, Y, and Z here, you, then you don't have a right. Mm. And here, because you did X, Y, and Z, maybe you're also wrong. So we find a way to be fair. Mm. You know, we won't be that strict. But of course, we will be guided by the law. We'll be also guided by case law because case law sometimes advances faster than the traditional legislation, mm. right? Mm. Because it will be assessing uh, the circumstances of the case. And then we explain it to you. Do you think courts of law would pay this attention that a tribunal would pay to a case like this so i litigation or going to court is more complicated mm. um and i don't say this to to um discourage people but you see with with the litigation there's a lot of paperwork there's a way you have to file documents use a certain order under the civil procedure code yeah, even me as a lawyer, Bona, I, I sit down and I'm like, Ay. <laughs> Not today. You know, like, no, I don't think this is my portion. <laughs> yeah, because just, and, and some forms can look so sa similar. And, and if you're not an uh, um, expert, you've not been exposed to this, you might just file the wrong form and they kind of look the same sort of thing. So that's the, the challenge. If mm. you're going to introduce evidence, there's a way you introduce evidence in a traditional court of law. To us, as a tribunal, because we are informal, We'll take the evidence and then review it and say, okay, for this evidence to be admissible, do you have one, two, three? Mm -hmm. Okay, yes. Mm -hmm. If you don't, mm -hmm. then unfortunately we can't take this evidence because the law says X, Y, and Z. And then if there are any extenuating circumstances, we figure out how justice will prevail. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Because us, we have the time. Mm -hmm. And we have, very an, uh, we have a, a very exclusive jurisdiction. So we have a lot more flexibility. Mm -hmm. And that is why you you would want us to be your first, first court of um, dispute resolution before you go to even the high court. And that's why uh, as Kenyans are learning more about the tribunal mm. and the regulations we have brought forward, then they mm. see that there are some areas they could also benefit. We push, we push for amendments for the law so that now they can start coming to us first before they go to the high court. Because right. you want someone who understands your industry. Mm. You want someone who understands, for lack of a better term, the common bad manners in the industry. Mm. And they, this person who the perpetrator can be <laughs> called out and say, <laughs> my friend here, Apa, clearly, you saw surely. this person, how could you? Are? And mm. then you took advantage. Mm. Do you, Why? Do you see such cases where you can clearly see, all right, the person that you are going to tell, unfortunately, the law, but you can just look at them and see this person was acting in utmost good faith. This person is completely, well, yeah, they were ignorant, but really they are the one on the right. If I remove this provision of the law, they are the one in the right. Mm -hmm. Do you find such cases and how do you resolve them to make sure that actually the true mother of the child takes the child? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it will always vary with the circumstance, right? And you have to play that whole King Solomon approach. Mm. <laughs> and that's why even from the beginning, when we've, we've seen the documents, we already know, right? On our end, we won't say it, but we probably already know. And that's why we'll be like, you really, really can't sort it out. <laughs> as we've seen the yeah? end. Yeah, as we've yeah. seen the end. But yeah. we're like, hey, Wanda, just, just 
just go outside and talk. And I think one thing that we really need to embrace as Kenyans is the ability to say, Enyewe, I messed up. Mm. I messed up. How can I make it right? Mm. You know, even if you have your lawyer saying, no, we can win this. But you yourself, you know, you've not done the right thing. You've not obeyed the law. Just eat humble pie and do the right thing. Yeah, even not just... Cause Unfortunately, sometimes the law will legitimize also what is not <laughs> ethical, right? Mm-hmm. It is what it is, right? Yes. But when you, you know, I've not done the right thing, just accept. And you see, w- I have seen that in other countries, in, in other jurisdictions. Like I did an internship in Las Vegas mm-hmm. and I saw how those lawyers, I, I understood how Americans make money. Yeah, because in the law firm I was working at, they handled a lot of entertainment disputes, a lot of image rights disputes and whatnot. And I would see my boss talk to the other lawyer and say, yeah, by the way, I think my client really messed up. Let's make them understand. And I think I can get him to make such an offer. Can Mm. you talk to your guy as well so that they can just be lenient? Mm. And we settle this matter. We save him money. We save my client money. As we get paid, we move on to the next brief. Mm. I I found that so impressive. (laughs) I was like, eh. Us here, we're adversarial. We're like, ah, we will fight like to Which the Which comes end. to my question, Liz. <laughs> so in our case, mm-hmm. do you sit at, sometimes at the tribunal and you can clearly see that the baby belongs to Ndu, mm-hmm. all right? But here is Eric coming and he's adamant and he's not refusing. Oh, you encourage them. Can you just, guys just go and talk? Mm-hmm. And we go and talk and we come back and Eric is still saying, no, 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 no. I want the baby. Give me my baby. But you know, clearly, this Eric has absolutely no idea yeah, where this baby came from. Yeah. Do you, but, but the law gives Eric the baby. Do you s- sit in such situations and then say, anyway, here is our ruling. Eric, you have all the paperwork for the baby, but it's not your baby. Yes. To is your story. Do Definitely. You because you see, the thing is, <coughs> some of these documents, when you register something, doesn't mean that someone else can't challenge it. If they have a legitimate interest, mm. a gil- legitimate right, they should challenge it and they can challenge it. They, they just have to make sure that they have the right evidence and they have the right information to back up what they're trying to assert or claim. And that's enough. Mm. And then, you know, once in a while, you'll get one of those complicated issues and you just pray for wisdom. Mm. <laughs> so, I mean, As you apply the law. So then do you see that you could have some of these things wrapped up before the tribe, you know, in time? Okay, let me ask that properly. That do they take time then to be able to settle? That, you know, you're just not being able, because essentially we're looking at graduated mediation here, yeah. and you're not able to agree on a particular thing. Um, that's one side. And then it's taken time. Then where do you say... Or, or must you, are you bound by time to be able to settle cases? Yes, like the tribunal, we're really bound by time. Our tribunal, we have a very quick turnaround time. Mm-hmm. Sometimes we, we ask ourselves, is, is it practical? <laughs> um, so from the time we receive an application, we have, excuse me, about 30 days mm. to give a judgment. Mm. Yeah, so which means everyone has to be quick and, and on their feet. <laughs> And they have to have their documents yeah. on, on standby and whatever to be able to put together their case. Because we have about 30 days. What if somebody is not satisfied with the judgment that has been given? So if they're not satisfied, then now they will proceed to the high court. Mm. So as we which have you are res- trying to avoid. In yeah, which you want to avoid. But so for us, we will do our, our level best. We will draft a carefully uh, thought out judgment where we are considering all the laws, all the practices, mm. all the case law. Because you see the thing with copyright, there's a lot of emerging issues. Yeah. yeah? So all these emerging <coughs> issues will always also borrow from foreign countries, foreign mm. jurisdictions, because they also guide. Because you see, the, the principles of the law are universal. Yeah. Mm. So we will review some of these international case law and, as well and say, hey, okay, because we, we don't have a specific act, uh, provision in the Copyright Act, maybe that deals with maybe AI, for example, mm. artificial intelligence, mm-hmm. then we'll be able to say, oh, we have seen in America a case like this, Australia. So we review all these documents and cases and we're able to say, okay, this is how I think it will be fair in this situation. Mm-hmm. And then we explain to the high, we have, in our judgment we've explained, mm. you can see a sound reasoning. <coughs> so much so that now if you're going to appeal, it will be very difficult even for the judge to give a fresh judgment. Mm. Okay. That's what the tribunal does because we also guide the high court because we are specialized, right? So we are able to guide. So when someone proceeds to appeal, 
we have made sure that we have spoken in a language that the high court judge will understand and mm-hmm. say eh and yeah way even can, you you I could have used this money yeah. to do something else <laughs> <laughs> so, so the, i mean of course there is the law and you talked about so the the way in which you present evidence before a tribunal is different from of course the way in which you present present evidence before a court of law so then obviously i'm i'm, I'm assuming then your your human cockle then is fixed and you're looking we do have some cases and i, I think there're very many that we can say you can see you can know that this individual this was their thing mm for some reason or another they may not have documented they may not have put it down the person on the other side of the divide may have more muscle financially may have the muscle of you know documentation they may have the experience to know that look and you know whether or not it's right or wrong they may have actually taken this creation of somebody else your human eye is is what you're looking through here would you say that in this case you would adjudicate on a human perspective or are we sticking to the required um evidentiary threshold we would still stick to the law mm. yeah we would still stick to the law what we when your gut tells you yeah <laughs> something else unfortunately because you oh, see no. when the law is very careful mm. and and carefully thought, thought thought through yeah so for example you didn't have a copyright certificate but you're claiming that you've had interaction so the the the, the law is clear in terms of even case law can you prove this interaction mm. show us this interaction even a text message <laughs> we have seen now that evidence rules have really expanded there was mm. a time it was if it wasn't a, a paper you it printed written on paper. printed on paper mm. it wasn't evidence but now we are seeing the evidence uh, laws are saying even a text just a simple text saying hi uh we are set for that car pitch meeting mm. so only to my email <laughs> that's enough you know that that could be show enough on the context it will show because now you are able to show access mm. right so there are those things you must do that's why i say aki don't be casual with your creations mm. don't be casual <laughs> <laughs> yeah you're in a bar having drinks you create something even a paper napkin would suffice as a contract there's a case law in the uk mm. that says that upheld a paper napkin they wrote each other some something and the court said that is a contract even if it's on a paper napkin it's a contract it's a contract yeah so i think that's the the the, the thing that we really need to embrace mm. and then the other mandate and power we have as the tribunal is where there's foreign works that you want access to and the author has refused to grant it to you has refused to grant it in the kenyan market then you go to kenya copyright board and tell kekobo i want access to this work but the author has refused then kekobo will review the the issue and they may summon the author and say hey why are you not licensing this work mm. and um, interrogate the issue and then they will d- they might probably find that it's a common good issue mm. you have to license this work and then if the author is not happy now with that decision they can come to us and say ah kekobo has done this the licensing my work i'm not happy or whatever and then we also further review right. we are to have such a case but that's what we, we can do you as well you have that mandate we have that mandate and then we also have the mandate to grant um preservation orders what we call the anton pillar awards mm-hmm. and the, the, i mean anton pillar orders which basically help preserve evidence and you see with copyright for example if let's say uh, we recorded a song mm. and then you're the producer you have all the gadgets and then you come and say i you, at least you never came to my studio you know ne- i never saw you <laughs> <laughs> and i was there and i saw you doing your thing you even saved a folder and the minute i'm i'm feeling aggrieved i can come to the tribunal and say hey i have this this evidence that needs to be preserved because make sure this person this guy does not it. delete the mm. folder yes. make sure they don't delete the folder or they don't uh. do this send people even to come and take pictures or whatever that kind of so we can give those kind of orders as well mm. yeah and yeah. hopefully eventually we'll have a, a broader mandate so that mm. we can listen to copyright infringement on a large scale because we are seeing a lot of kenyans especially youth they'll go to social media how many times have we seen social media people ah, shaming day. name and shame there yes. was a time there was a hashtag name and shame mm. and then you'll be like oh you you stole my photograph you stole my music <laughs> you stole my film yeah 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 so i'm like no 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 if you go to a dispute resolution place a tribunal or something will help you resolve if there's issues of ignorance you'll be educated mm. and then there'll be instances where you can all make money let's make that money <laughs> and then the next deal tomorrow you're more informed you're better informed you're better informed yeah. you're more smart in mm. your in your approach 
Yeah. I have a question here from my friend Limo. He's asking, is there an overlap of mandates between the tribunal and the small claims court? Are there instances where people go to the small claims court with matters relating to copyright? So, the thing is, if, you're, if it's an issue of claiming money, that's the because the small claims money i mean small claims court looks at the issue of money yeah yeah how much are you owed but the minute you will introduce matters ip matters copyright matters patent or whatever they have no jurisdiction so they might even say you know what because we cannot confirm who is the author i can't confirm that you are owed one hundred thousand. yeah mm. so that's so there's not really an overlap it's more about so those what ones is can deal subject. with okay we had a contract you're supposed to perform yes at this concert for two hours mm. and i believe you only performed for an hour so i'm paying you half yes that one is that no one issue of listen. dispute of. yeah yeah because there's already been a document that the court would review <laughs> mm. and say oh there's a contract what happened mm-hmm. yeah the previous <laughs> artist the Stayed the, the, ca- the curtain stage. raiser stayed mm. forever on stage and yeah. I was supposed to finish my performance at midnight mm. because I was going for another gig. Yeah. And so I came on to the stage at 11. I was ready to go. Mm. <laughs> mm. Liz, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. And thank you for explaining the Copyright mm. uh, wow. Tribunal to us. Ah, thanks. We could talk about copyright for like two weeks. She will come again. <laughs> you will come again. We need to educate and make sure that all of us understand these matters. Yeah. Liz Lenjo is the chairperson of the Copyrights Tribunal. She's been here with us talking to us about that, the Copyrights uh, Tribunal.